Welcome to Game Week, Bulldog fans. But, Steve, normally the season opener will be the topic of conversation. Well, in a way it is, but the, all the topics have been this past weekend. A pretty wild weekend here at Bulldog Country ahead of it. We'll see, we named a quarterback on, I believe it was a Thursday. Mm -hmm. Then uh, Friday, the big news comes out about the NCAA loss of eligibility, which we will call suspensions from now on just to make it convenient. And then uh, following the news that a quarterback has now entered the transfer portal. I think Coach Joe Moorhead and the staff are better to get focus on game week because they've had enough distractions already. There's no doubt. It's definitely a Maroon Friday to remember, David, uh, with the sanctions. And, and listen, give Mississippi State Administration a lot of credit here. They, they, in six months' time, they go from uncovering this academic misconduct, conduct an investigation, and then move to sanctions. They avoid the dark cloud that hovers over a program for sometimes years, if we've seen in a state recently, uh, you know, four- and five-year investigations. Uh, Mississippi State avoids all that, and yes, the sanctions are not a slap on the wrist. The good news is there is no postseason ban in either sport, and so we'll move on from this, and as Joe Moorhead said, the data Bulldogs will be better before it. And that is not something that should be overlooked easily. The Bulldogs will be bowl eligible. Now, they've got to win their way, too. We think they will, regardless how these suspensions play out. All right, today we had our press conference with Coach Joe Moorhead, the first time we've talked to him since the news came out, obviously. We did not expect him to name the players. He didn't. And nor will State list them at any point this season. We'll have to kind of guess as we go. And remember, too, fans, just because a player sits out a game does not mean He's one of those involved in the suspensions for this. It could be other things like parking tickets or other things as well, which is kind of unfair to them, but that's the nature of it. If you're going to talk about one suspension, you have to give them all, and I think State's playing it wisely in this regard. Yeah, and, and people need to understand, too, that there, there's this desire to know everything, but not everything needs to be known. And uh, there are a lot of names that are circulating out there, and, David, we've seen some of this on our own message boards, and some of these names are incorrect. Mm -hmm. And so we're not going to – elaborate or speculate about that. We don't want to unfairly malign the name of, a, of an innocent player, and, and that's what would happen in many respects. But the university is going to err on the side of caution. They are bound by FERPA, mm -hmm. which is a very, very stringent when it comes to academic privacy and student privacy. And so there's not going to be some official announcement or declaration. It'll be a game-by-game -game deal. So let's take it to this week. Now, Coach Joe Murray talked about the uh, players available this weekend. Uh, some questions uh, injury-wise. Let's start with that. Uh, apparently, Boggs are in pretty good shape. Willie Gay, who uh, has missed some practices with a lower body, we believe it's a foot. I think a turf toe, in fact, is what we've been told. Um, he's been a red jersey, but he has participated in what drills he can. They hope to have him back at practice by tomorrow. After that, I think the team is pretty well healthy. Yeah, it sure seems that way. And, you know, that's – one of the things with this team in fall camp, things have changed a lot in football over the course of the last 10 years. You, know, you, you no longer have two-a-day practices. You don't have a lot of one-on-one -on -one tackling. There's not a lot of tackling to the ground because the bottom line is that you need your team to be healthy. And, and how many times when we've seen it at Mississippi State where you have an important player be injured or lost for the season in fall camp, Bulldogs have been, uh, been very good this year in that respect. And really, outside of Alec Murphy was a guy that started in the red jersey. By and large, the red jersey numbers have been pretty small. Uh, Kendall Jones, he's a guy probably still a little more of a question mark, but he's, he's somebody they expect to work back into full strength as the season goes on. I, I bring up Gabe because he's listed number one at the linebacker position uh, with Leo Lewis, who I understand had a really good camp, so that uh, bodes well for that position as far as it goes. Uh, I'm talking about the depth chart. Yes, we have an official depth chart released. How it actually works out for game week, we will find out as things go because there's some names in there we think, you know, good chance we'll probably miss some games this season. But uh, the thing to stress, Steve, Mississippi State can space these out. These 10 players involved can be spaced out over the course of all 13 games, assuming you make a bowl game. So it kind of becomes a chess match there of who do you want to play this week? Who do you want to take a chance on? What does it mean to this game? And the injuries will be a factor in that as well. So I stress a couple of things more before we finish the subject on that. A, that you can't skip loss of eligibility by redshirting, nor by injury. And B, you can pick and choose what games they do get to sit out. Yeah, correct. It's not like a typical, you just sit the first game, eight games of the year. Um, but, you know, David, one of the things that I think a lot of people lost in all this conversation is the SEC travel roster restriction. Mm -hmm. You can only bring 70 players. And so some of the guys that we expect to be suspended would not have made those trips. Because they're freshmen or redshirt freshmen. Exactly. And so, yes, there are some losses. There are some things. And we're not going to sit here and whitewash all that and say, well, this is all going to be okay. There's a, there's a couple guys specifically that – we're expected to be major contributors to the team that we believe are part of that number. But the bottom line is Mississippi State is going to play a high 
quality brand of football this year. We expect Mississippi State to be a ball team, and this should not be anything that sidetracks or derails the trajectory of this season or this program. Before we get more to this weekend's game, uh, quickly, a couple of players whose eligibility status has nothing to do with the announce of the weekend. A couple of guys transfers in that uh, have not been cleared yet. Yeah, Alan Love, Coach Moorhead, shares with us today that his uh, – request for a waiver to play this year as a medical hardship type situation that has been denied uh, we were told early on it was a little bit iffy I think initially they were a little more positive about it but because he's outside of the 100 mile radius mm -hmm. from home that, that is a little more of a gray issue and so there has been an appeal filed on his behalf he has had some teammates from Louisville that have gone elsewhere that have had their waivers approved right. which kind of makes you kind of scratch your head a little bit and then Kareem Walker that, that's something that we've been, uh, you know, for nine months now, we've, it's been the, the, kind of like a, the, where in the world is Carmen San Diego, where in the world is Kareem Walker, you know. And so he has completed his coursework. He shares that uh, Fort Scott has accepted that coursework. The drop ad date happens this week. Coach Moorhead said we'll know in the next couple of days. That should be Monday, Tuesday at the latest Wednesday. And so uh, I think it's by Wednesday or not at all. And if Carmen San Diego can play defensive tackle, please show up in the Superdome this weekend. You might come in handy because that's one of the thinner positions. Uh, we'll get to Keaton Thompson in just a minute, but let's quickly go over the depth charts you looked at. Any surprises as far as you go? Let's talk about the wide receiver positions in particular. You know, I don't think so, David. And, you know, we've always kind of approached these written depth charts as kind of entertainment-only type things. And, and Joe Moorhead said we're going to kind of go with the hot hand. He's not sure if they'll rotate a lot of receivers this weekend. But – you know, we know what we've seen in practice. We expect Osiris Mitchell and Dedrick Thomas as the top returners to come in and do a good job for you. Stephen Gidry, of course, arguably state's most gifted returning receiver. And then you add Isaiah Zuber and Javante Payton to the mix. This is a different group. And I think the returning group has been challenged by the increased competition level of the new guys coming in. We expect this group to be better. Now it's time to see them do it when the band is playing when it matters most. Now, back to the depth chart, only two quarterbacks are listed, and one of them, as you expect, Tommy Stevens is a starter. Garrett Schrader, the true freshman who only arrived in January, is listed number two ahead of Jalen Maiden. That brings up Tom, the Keaton Thompson question. As we mentioned, he has entered the transfer portal, but he is still here. He is not on the team as of the moment, Coach Moorhead clarified today, but he's still here. He's still talking to Moorhead, to his quarterback coach, Andrew Briner. This situation is far from finalized. It's true that they met. On Friday, they met again yesterday, Coach Moorhead, Coach Briner. They're going to meet again today and possibly tomorrow. Uh, Mississippi State wants Keaton Thompson to stay. He is not being pushed out the door. This is not a situation where they just decided, okay, Tommy's our guy. We don't care about KT. That, that is completely out of the question. They want him to stay, not just as an insurance situation, but it's because of the fact Keaton is a big part of this team. Uh, he is a leader on this team. He is a valued member of this team. And so having him back would be big. Uh, that's a work in progress, as we know, David, and, and, and Coach said it'll be up to Keaton and, and, and when he's ready to make that information public, should he like to come back. And it has to be a disappointment to Keaton as well, though, because by making this choice, he will not be able to play in a game in his hometown, perhaps his only opportunity ever to play in a game in a hometown. But as Coach Moorhead said, the portal giveth, as in Mississippi State starting quarterback now, Tommy Stevens, and the portal could taketh away if as, you know, Keaton does decide to leave. But, again, that's far from settled. Um, Anything, takeaways you heard from Moorhead today that maybe um, I've missed here? No, I think it's one of those things now. I think everybody's ready to go play a football game. I think last weekend took a big toll on the Mississippi State fan base. And here's the deal. If you go out there on Saturday and the offense looks good and you win a ball game, that'll all fade away. Mm -hmm. You get in here next weekend, a lot of Bulldog fans will be back in town for the first time you know, since the regionals, and it'll be kind of like a family reunion. And so the sting of last Friday's news will kind of subside some. And I really think, just looking at Jim Moorhead today, he really wants to talk about football. And he did touch on some of these other unpleasant issues. But I think hopefully this is the last time we discuss that as we get into the year. Uh, and this weekend it's about Saturday and about playing the, the Raging Cajuns. Mississippi State will get down to New Orleans in time to have a walkthrough in the Dome. They negotiated that with the Dome authorities, as uh, Coach Moore had said, kind of the Hoosiers factor, even though, yes, they played in quite a few NFL venues. The Dome is a little different matter, obviously, uh, particularly players who follow the Saints all the time. Also, we are sad to report Cowbells will not be allowed in the Superdome this weekend, and there will be a clear bag policy, so 
good luck trying to sneak your uh, artificial noisemakers in there. But this, it, it is a road game technically. Louisiana Lafayette is the host. I'm sorry, I still call them Lafayette. That, That's but, okay. Yeah. They, they wasted not, a ton of tax dollars in the state legislature <laughs> to earn that nomenclature. We'll call them that if we want to. At least I'm not calling them southwestern Louisiana at this point, though. Anyway, um, clear bags, no cowbells. I count on the ingenuity of Bulldog fans to work around that as best they can, obviously. But Steve, you and I will be talking more about the game. We'll be doing a video uh, sometime we are this morning because uh, both of us certainly are good at staying clean and sober, so I don't think we'll fall victim to the uh, overnight celebrations too much in New Orleans on Friday evening. But uh, we're just ready to play some football, to watch the Bulldogs play some football and get this season going because there's been enough distractions the last two weeks. It's time to get this thing going. No, no doubt about it, David. And I think that's what the fan base needs more than anything is just go out there and win a ball game. Just win, baby. So for Steve Robertson and Mike Nemeth and our entire crew at 24-7, uh, Paul Jones is putting a depth store, chart story up, and uh, Robbie Falk is taking care of a Keaton Thompson update story as well. I'll be in there writing something to go with our videos. Have plenty of material for you this week. We'll be talking to offensive players tomorrow. Uh, starting quarterback Tommy Schrade, not Tommy, Tommy Stevens will be in there with us. Um, tomorrow we get the defensive staff on Wednesday as well. A lot of information this morning, a long video, but we thank you for staying with us. And it's game week. So, Bulldogs, let's get ready to meet everybody down there in New Orleans in the Superdome, 11 a.m. ESPNU telecast, Saturday morning.